Good day and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Arthur Francis Devan. Today we're going to be dealing with confidence interval, otherwise called the confidence limit. For example, if you were to be carrying out an experiment on the maybe say titration, you intend to carry four, five, six different experiments, and uh, one of the variables seems to be far different from the other variables. Let's say you have 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, the other one now gives you 3.4, then the fifth one continues 1.5, 1 1.6. 1 so you realize that that one that gives you a higher variable, you will be confused as to whether you should maintain it or you should reject it. So the limit here, the confidence limit now try to bring to our knowledge at what level should we reject a variable or at what level should we maintain a variable. So by so doing, we have two methods which we are used or which we use to reject result. One, the confidence interval of uh, the standard deviation and the true mean, which contain at 95.5% of the relevant result. Two, the Q test at 90% confidence level and the rejection quotient. So the Q test is what we're dealing with today, which falls within the range of 90 or 95, as the case may be, or as the questions will go. Then that we have our formula. Our Q, which is the quotient, is equal to Xn minus Xn minus 1 over Sn minus X1. Now, the Xn is a questionable result. That particular variable that seems to be too big is questionable. That is what it is. Minus Xn minus 1 is, you should, the number of the questionable variable which you're dealing with, if you, the number to it, that is minus 1 from there, the net variable to it, if we're having 3, 4, uh, 5, Nine, okay, yes, four. So this is questionable. So the x n minus one means take out one variable. If you take out one, this is where you get to. So this becomes s n minus the net variable to the questionable, questionable variable, which is five, is what we take in here. Now, this is still our questionable variable minus our initial first variable, which is one. And when we do that, we get our q experimental. Then we we'll compare the Q experimental with the Q critical from the uh, statistical table which is given to all analytical chemists to be able to check which of the variable is larger. And we say when the Q critical Q critical is greater than Q experimental, we retain the questionable variable, which is could be because of what. Um, a random error, but then we retain it. But when the Q experimental is greater than the Q critical, we reject the variable. And so, whatever ought to be done will be done without that questionable variable. Let's take a practical question here. Um, question number one. The following set of measurements The following set of measurements were obtained in a laboratory experiment for the determination of the radius of a metallic bore using uh, the Hooke's law. So, these are the variables. 12.2 So, we call this X and 12.2 if you look up there, you realize that one of the variables seems to be an outlier, if I must read. Is one of the val values in the above set of results seems to be an outlier. We should carry out a Q-test to determine if it could be rejected. Say if there was a random error during the experiment process. C. Express your result in terms of precision. And so if we have to go down to that of precision means we have to go through the standard deviation procedures. That's pretty long. 
But I don't know if we can give it a try, but let's see what happens. So from here, 12.7 is the outlier, is bigger, it's too big compared to the rest. So that becomes our questionable variable. So if I have my Q experiment from the formula, Q test is equals to Xn minus Xn minus 1 over Xn minus X1. And this is my Xn is 12.7. Minus the number before it is 12.4 over 12.7 and the first number is 12.2. This is equals to, if we proceed further, we have 12.7 minus 12.4. I have 0 0.3 over 12.7 minus 12.2 I have 0.5 This is equals to 0.3 divided by 0.5 This is equals to 0.6 So now I have my Q experiment to be 0.6 now, I will have to look from the rejection portion, which is the Q-critical, the value for this, 0 0.6, but how many values do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The confidence level they give us, let me read it again, it says if it was random, okay, rejected, at 90 or 95, that's what they say, so we we'll use 90 or 95. Okay, now my Q experiment is 0 0.6. I want to look for the Q critical at 90. Q critical at 90. And Q critical at 95. I get them all out. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 variable, I go to my Q table. So 6. I have 6 here, at 90 is 0 0.560, 0 0.560, at 95 is 0 0.625, 0 0.625. Remember, the rule says, when Q experimental is greater than Q critical, we reject the outlier 12.7. But if Q critical is less than Q experiment is less than Q critical, we maintain. So from here we have 0 0.6. We have 0 0.5 at 90. So at 90, which they referred us to, this is 0 0.5. It is less than 0 0.6 of experiment. Therefore, we say that since I may not write that down, I think. Since the Q critical at 90 is 0 0.56, which is less than that of the Q experiment, 0 0.6, the outlier 12.7 should be retained. If this were to be greater, we would have rejected this. So the value should be retained. Okay, let's take another question. And um, they say we should Address, say if they, uh, there was a random error during the experimental process. Of course, there was a random error, but the variable 12.7 is not out of place. It should still be retained. Okay, another question here. The following set of values were obtained in the chloride analysis. 103. Now, they say the following set of values were obtained in the chloride analysis. All these variables in milli equivalent per meter. One value is suspected to be an outlier or out of place, that is, too large. Determine if it can be rejected or not, and thus say if there was a random error at 90 or 95 confidence interval. So this is just 90 or 95. We come back 
we say our Q experimental is equal to xn minus xn minus 1 over sn minus x1. So from here, our questionable variable here is 114. It's too far apart from the rest. So we say 114 minus 107 over 114 minus 103. This is equals to so 114 minus 107 is 7 over 114 minus 103 is 11. Okay. And this is equals to 7 over 11 is 0 0.63. 0 0.6 approximately 4. Now, if our Q experimental, let's call it Q experimental, is equal to 0 0.64, our Q critical will be what? At 90% confidence. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 degree of freedom. So, I'll move down with it into the table and check. 4. At 90 is 0 0.7, yes, 0 0.76, 0 0.765, 0 0.765. What about, okay, this is at 90. Q critical, at 95, we have to check, although they didn't ask us. At 95, uh, 4 is 0 0.829. So we still higher, yeah. Zero point eight two nine. So we move on. The question now says when the Q experimenter is greater than the Q critical, we reject the variable. But when the Q critical is greater than the Q experimenter, we retain the value. So from here, the Q critical zero point seven or zero point eight, as the case may be, the both of them are larger than zero point six. So. The outlier 114 should be retained. It is as a result of random error, but the variable must be retained. Let's take another question. Okay. Question number two, done. Question three. The following set of measurements were obtained in the analysis of nitrogen content of a soil sample from Unica University of uh, Calabar Farm for the control and monitoring of the application of fertilizer, NPK. The variables are 2.2, 2.2, 2.3, x, 2.2. So from what we have there on the board, it's obvious that 2.7 is the outlier. Is, is too large. So we have to find out if we must retain at what confidence, where is it? Question 3 at 95 confidence interval. So let's go there. We have my Q experimental to be xn minus xn minus 1 over xn minus x1. And this is equal to the outlier is 2.7 minus the one next to it is 2.4 over 2.7 minus the first one is 2.2 which is equals to now 2.7 minus 2.4 is 0 0.3 0 0.3 over 2.7 minus 2.2 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.6. Now, the Q experiment is 0 0.6. Q critical at 95 is equal to what? So I come down here again from this table. Now I have Degree of freedom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I move down to 8. 
I have at 95, it, I have 0 0.526. 0 0.526. For us to maintain or retain 2.7, we say that the Q critical must be greater than the Q experiment. But having seen that our Q experiment is greater than the Q critical, the variable 2.7 should be rejected because it is less than. And so we move on to the next question. So if you were to be carrying out your titrational question, and these are the variables you have gotten so far, and you've discovered that one of the variables seems to be, you'll be thinking, should I retain it or throw it? Then you have to apply your Q-test experiment to determine as to whether you should maintain or you should reject it. From what we have so far here, is to be rejected. That is question number three. Okay. Question four. Consider the following set of results and determine if the outlier can be rejected at 95% confidence interval. Okay, this is very similar to what we just did again. And 2.4. So the outlier or the variable that is too large there is the 2.6. So I have my Q to be Sn minus Sn minus 1 over Sn minus x1. And this is Xn is 2.6 minus 2.4 over 2.6 minus 2.2. So 2.6 minus 2.4 is 0.2. Now, 2.6 minus 2.2 is 0.4. And this is 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So Q experiment is equal to 0 0.5. Let's see from the question, at what interval? 95 confidence interval. So at 95, we we'll check over here how many variables, degree of freedom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Come to 7 at 95, 0 0.568. 0 0.568. Q critical at 95%. So we say when the Q critical is greater than the Q experimental, we retain. When it is less than, we reject. So here the Q critical is greater than the Q experimental, 0.5 is here 0.5. So the variable or the outlier 2.6 should be retained. Okay, we can call it off here in our Confidence interval with our foreknowledge of the Q experimental and Q critical, we'll be able to determine as to whether we should maintain or reject a variable. Most importantly, when we're carrying out uh, researches in the lab, like titration and so forth and so forth, you have an outlier which is greater than the usual. You have to subject it into uh, the Q test experiment. And if it is uh, successful, you retain. If it is not, you reject. And um, that's we come to the end of the class. Thank you and have a nice day.